Chris Cohn. Well, thank you so much, uh, Governor Carper. I have not been compared to James Brown uh, recently, uh, and I do feel good and I do appreciate uh, your friendship, your partnership. Uh, we have a great congressional delegation with Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester and uh, Senator Carper, and I, I, I know that I'm so blessed to have a chance to serve alongside them. We are here, we are here to celebrate the centennial of goodwill, to celebrate the fact that 100 years ago, a group of civic and community leaders and faith leaders came together to invest in the power of work, to lay the foundation for what today is a remarkable, capable organization that's transforming lives and strengthening our community. So to Colleen and uh, to Marvin Hargrove and everybody who's on the board, to everybody who works and serves here at Goodwill, and to the folks we're about to hear from, uh, both Vernell Brown and Teresa White, who will help us hear the individual power of their experience here and the significance of what Goodwill does. Congratulations. Congratulations on a great century of service and laying the foundation for your next century of making a great difference. Now, Colleen and I were talking before we got started about uh, a small but important feature of that $2.3 trillion CARES Act Senator Carper was talking about that we passed just a year ago. It helped provide support for millions of small businesses and keeping small businesses open Helping them not go bankrupt was a big piece of that bill, but not well or widely known was what a difference it made to nonprofits. And here at Goodwill, roughly $4.6 million in PPP funding, the Prioritized Paycheck Protection Program was received, and as a member of the Small Business Committee and the Appropriations Subcommittee that funded that program, we worked hard to make sure that Goodwill was eligible, received it, and we're now going to work hard to make sure that this is a forgivable loan that turns into a grant to make sure the balance sheet of goodwill remains strong. In the second book of James, in James 2.18, you knew I was going there, didn't you? There's, Darius is like, yeah, I knew he was going to. There's no way I was going to yield the floor without going to James 2.18, was there? And just to paraphrase, folks are talking and one says, I'll show you my faith, and another one says, I'll show you my works, and the, the concluding verse is, I will show you my faith by my works. One of the pieces of what Goodwill does is demonstrate our faith in each other, our belief in the goodness, in the potential, in the possibility of every single human being. What Goodwill does is seize people. It sees the potential in people. It sees them not as the cast-offs or castaways, not as those who've gotten off track or who are beyond redemption, but it sees every single one of us as being deserving of the love and the regard and the support of each other and every single one of us as having a place of value in this society. I just dropped off some things this morning. My children have grown. My sons are out of the house. My wife spent time yesterday cleaning some items that were theirs when they were young and other children will now enjoy them. They're in good condition. They can be, as the Senator said, recycled and have a new purpose and a new life. And that is a small reminder of the faith in each other that Goodwill has, not just in things that are here in this store, but in people. In people who have good hearts and great potential, who learn skills here that make their future brighter and clearer and stronger, and who then go on to have amazing lives. It has been a blessing to get to know folks here whose lives have been transformed by Goodwill. So thank you for what you do, and thank you for the difference that you make. And last, I'm just going to mention, tax policy drives big changes. One of the best parts of the bill that was just signed, the American Recovery Plan, which the Senator spoke about, is an expansion of the earned income tax credit, something that is little known and not as broadly taken advantage of as it should be. But for people in America who work, they should not live in poverty. And the earned income tax credit makes sure that's true. And we just expanded it. And God willing, we will make this permanent, an expansion of the earned income tax credit. And I just introduced a bill with my friend, conservative Republican friend, James Langford of Oklahoma, a longtime pastor before he came uh, to the Congress. It is a universal giving 
Pandemic Response and Recovery Act that would expand the charitable deduction and incentivize and encourage people to do the kind of giving and the kind of growing and the kind of purposeful partnership that is typical of what you do here at Goodwill. So I'm hopeful that we will enact that this year and we will continue to be the wind beneath your wings, Colleen. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to join with you today. I'm so excited to hear from the rest of our speakers and let me now introduce someone um, who is serving as our county executive, uh, who was just recognized by the County Executives of America earlier today. He's on their board. He's doing a great job as a steward of the resources entrusted to him uh, by our community. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Meyer.